Honorable members, I beg to report that the special prosecutor bill went through committee stage with amendment to clause 11. Prime Minister, Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, I move that the report of the committee be adopted and the bill be read a third time and passed. Honourable members, the question is that the report of the committee be adopted and that the special prosecutor bill be read a third time and passed. I now put the question, as many as of that opinion say aye, aye. as many as of a contrary opinion say no, I think the ayes have it, the ayes have it. Prime Minister Honorable Philip J. Pierre has initiated a comprehensive anti-corruption action plan with the intention of purging the public service of nefarious operatives and also introduce legally enforceable deterrence against corrupt conduct by public officials with the enactment of the much anticipated Special Prosecutor Act. Mr. Speaker, this act is not about a witch hunt. This act is about having St. Lucia as a place where corruption is not tolerated or encouraged, whether for politicians or for public officials. This is the object of the act, Mr. Speaker. Debate on the Special Prosecutor Act went through its final stages in the lower house of assembly on August 9th. According to the act, the Judicial and Legal Services Commission, in consultation with the Attorney General, shall appoint a licensed attorney with at least 10 years practicing experience to serve as St. Lucia's special prosecutor to specifically carry out investigations into allegations of corrupt conduct by incumbent public officials and also public officials who have demitted office. If you entered politics, and let's say you had a minibus, and within that term of office, Mr. Speaker, you found yourself with what? A plane? No. And you found yourself within that term of office, you find yourself with a five, a four-story building with, with an elevator. And when you entered office, everybody can see what you entered office of. Use me as an example. Everybody can see what I entered office of. I still live the same place. That's what I entered office of. Anybody can see. But if you enter, and after four years, before you were there, you had a minibus. And because you know how to use money, after four years, Mr. Speaker, you have these vivid signs of wealth. Somebody should ask you, where did you get that money from? Honorable Pierre's Labour Party administration has blown the whistle on several questionable government transactions, some of which have been intercepted and could be referred to the soon-to-be-appointed special prosecutor for further investigation. When we leave government, we want to leave a better country. A country when people will not believe that these politicians are crooks. A country where people will not say, where no politician will ever say, when I commit crime, I commit crime on my own. And if any of my ministers ever make this statement, I say it publicly. If any of my ministers ever say in public, when they commit crime, they commit their own, I will fire them. You cannot tolerate that level of ill discipline in your cabinet, in a cabinet. No prime minister, Mr. Speaker, no matter who the minister is. No prime minister should tolerate that level of largesse and say whatever you want and, and disrespect in parliament of people, Mr. Speaker. No left, no prime minister should, and this prime minister will not tolerate it, Mr. Speaker. This prime minister will tolerate a higher level of governance. The authority of the special prosecutor is not in conflict with that of the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution. The Special Prosecutor Act explains, quote, subject to the powers of the Director of Public Prosecutions under Section 73 of the Constitution of St. Lucia, 
The special prosecutor may perform any function in relation to the institution carrying on and withdrawal of prosecution for an offense against the laws of St. Lucia and may prosecute a matter in his or her own name, end quote, eliminating public sector corruption and penalizing the perpetrators have been the perpetually futile call to action that spans numerous administrations until now. The legislation introduced by the Philip J. Peer-led administration provides a credible avenue for the public to discreetly report corrupt conduct. It also establishes a workable legal framework proven throughout other Commonwealth jurisdictions for a special prosecutor to receive complaints and investigate corrupt conduct and also further diminish opportunities for misappropriation and abuse of government resources and assets by public officials. From the office of the Prime Minister, Rihani Isidore.